And welcome back to informational writing. So we've been talking about how to write an information book. So the first thing you're going to do, and we've already done this, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to generate, you're going to generate ideas. So to generate ideas, you're going to think about what you know a lot of and te you can teach others. So what do I know a lot about that I can teach? others. So we've done a lot of work with um, what do we know a lot about that we can teach others. So today's job is going to take that and we're going to take it a little bit further. And um, so whenever I'm starting to create, I'm about to create something new. Whenever I'm about to create something new, I need to imagine it first. So I can't just say, oh, I'm going to write a book, and then I just start writing. No, I need to think about what it's going to look like first. I need to imagine it. I need to picture it in my my head. Okay? So do you do this? Do you stop and think about what you're going to do before you do it? Um, Hands in the air if you stop and think about what you're going to do before you do it. Yeah, that's it's it looks like it's about it's about fifty fifty unless you're an adult and the adults tend to be definitely hands in the air. Um so so um like before you bake a cake, imagine do you imagine how it would turn out? Yeah. Or do you, um, or before you throw a football, do you imagine it whizzing down the field? And I know that, um, like, especially, I've heard that quarterbacks, if they don't envision where their ball's going to go, or if they can't see the follow through and where the ball's going to go, that, um, they can't get the ball where it needs to go. I also know that when I took a self-defense class in college, they said that um, if you can't picture yourself coming, we use pretend weapons. They said if you can't if you can't picture yourself coming up with a weapon, then you're not going to end up with the weapon, and the bad guy's going to end up with the weapon. So they said you have to visually see yourself coming out with the weapon, so that when you're defending yourself, that you end up with the weapon. In our case, it was the fake weapon, but still. Um, so we do this too. We're going to imagine the text we need to write before we even get started. Today, we're going to learn how some of our favorite mentor texts can help us imagine um, what we want to create. So I'm going to pull out a couple of these. This one looks pretty cool. Look at this. This is um, Aunt Harriet's Underground. Oops, you can't see. Hang on, let me zoom it out. So this is Aunt Harriet's Underground. And look at this. They have people flying on Aunt Harriet's Underground Railroad in the sky. So if I thumb through this, now is this the typical um, book that you think about when you think about an informational book? No. No. We don't generally think about uh, these kinds of pictures in an informational book. Um, so this is not typically what we think of when we think about. Now look at this illustration. This says, um, go free north or die. There's a bunch of slaves. It looks like slave faces behind the kid. Um, 
So this is an informational book, but it doesn't really look like an informational book, does it? And it look at look. This is a picture of um, a sale. So I've reward four hundred four uh, forty thousand dollars. Harriet Tubman, dead or or alive. Sale by auction, men, women, and children. I think sometimes these kinds of books gives you the best. It says it was against the law for a slave to learn to read or write. Here's, and we talked about this one the other day, uh, Jumping the Broom. So this kind of gives you a different spin on an informational book. Um, it gives you something different that you could do with an informational book. Um, usually, I know that um, one of the librarians always said it had to have real pictures. It couldn't be pretend pictures. But in this case, it's a pretend picture. Um, we haven't really gotten into it, but quilts sometimes would show you the way to freedom. As much as music and songs would show you the way to freedom. All right, so that's one book we could look at. Um, let's see, what's, we got some others over here. Um, Go Free or Die, it's another one by Harriet, about Harriet Tubman. Now this one looks like, it's got black and white, so it's a little bit older. There's chapters. Do we see the typical information stuff that you typically would find in an informational book? Well, we don't see any, uh, um, Captions. Do we see captions? No one. Typically, you would see that in a picture book. Um, we see some pictures, but we don't see the captions. Um, we have headings, or we have chapters, but we don't really have chapter titles. Um, so there's things that we're missing in those books. Um, this is a biography on Harriet Tubman. And once again, it's a uh, biography is a real, a story about a real person, right? Well, she was because, um, she helped all those slaves go free and, uh, she got hit in the head and this is them picking cotton. I don't remember, but she got hurt in the head. So she would have splitting headaches for the longest of times. So that's not the typical, this one looks like it might be more of a typical. So this is another Harriet Tubman book. And there's some facts. Oh, it says, look at this, these facts. These are quick facts. Um, she made at least 15 trips to free slaves. A total of $40,000 cash was offered for capture. She served as a spy and a nurse during the Civil War. Her face is on a U.S. postage stamp. These are the table of contents in here. Brave conductor, young slave, escape attempt, escape to freedom, return, bold rescuer, Civil War spy, last year's daring woman, words from Harriet Tubman, important dates in Harriet Tubman's life, words to know, read more, useful addresses, internet sites, and index. I'm not reading this book, but um, I wanted you guys to see some things that might be, um, that might help you when you're doing your own. Now, notice these chapters aren't really long, are they? Most of these chapters are just, what, a page. Like Civil War Spy. In 1861, the Civil War began. A Civil War is a conflict between people within the country. Harriet joined the soldiers fighting for the North. She fought against slavery in the South. She served as a nurse for wounded soldiers. She went into any enemy territory to spy on troops. Once Harriet went on a rescue mission with Northern troops, they freed more than 750 slaves from prisons. Harriet served in the Army for three years. People called her General Tubman. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. This written order freed all slaves in the United States. This, the war ended two years later, and the northern states won. So she served as a nurse, a spy, and a soldier in the Civil War.
they must have done a lot of research. And sometimes, you know, if you have spent years and years and years fishing, um, you would have a great knowledge of different kind of fishing things if you use different fishing lures and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't fish that much. Um, this is a book called If You Traveled on the Underground Railroad. And then there's an introduction. And, um, how did it get its name? So this is, this would be a cool resource if you're writing about the Underground Railroad. Um, and it's not like the typical, again, it's not like the typical, um, books that you think you might find. This one's another picture book about, uh, Harriet Tubman. But I know that I find, like, I learn a lot when I see pictures, right? Um. And the things that people are talking about makes a lot more sense. And notice on the back here, this has important dates. So important dates in Harriet's life or important dates surrounding her life. So, um, So writers don't just list facts, but they give information in a really interesting way. Um, writers call these types of books literary nonfiction. So, um, what are some of the things that you found really cool when we were thumbing through, or some of the things that we've seen? that you thought were really cool when we were um, walking through the writing or the nonfiction books? Okay, so date, you thought the dates were really cool? So we might want to do dates in our, in our um, depending on what our, our writing is about, you might want to include dates. Okay. Okay, so dates, facts. What else did you find really interesting? What? Okay, so drawings versus um, actual pictures. Okay, we'll catch it in a minute. Um, what about when you use writerly eyes? What were some of the things that you found that were really super cool when you're doing writerly eyes? Oh, that's cool. So jokes at the top of the book. I really pre I really appreciated some of the charts that they talked about. Like yeah, so maybe the life cycle depending on what you're writing about. Oh, a timeline? Yeah, a timeline. Okay, so timeline. Captions. And I really like, um, I just lost it. Okay, so bold. Okay. So, 
So when we're discussing, when we're doing information immersion, we also, we look, a lot of times we look at notice. Like, what do you notice? Um, and then you need to name it. Then you need to tell why. So this is the things that we did when we were doing writerly eyes. Notice, name, and then why. Um... So, so some of the other things that you might notice were, um, you might notice, um, text boxes, you might notice close-ups, like where they zoom in on something, right? Um... Photographs, we talked about that. But make sure that you notice writing too. Play, pay close attention to the types of words that the author uses and how the sentences are constructed. These are the techniques we also want to emulate. So we don't want to just emulate or we don't want to be just like how they write. We also want to like write like they write, right? Does that make sense? I know, but... But do you understand what I'm saying? We don't want to just do these things like they do. We also want to write our words similar to the way they would write. Um, so I'm going to go back to my chart that I started a little bit ago. And it says... How to write an informational book. So first uh, first job we're going to do is generate ideas. What do I know? A lot about that I can teach others. The next thing we're going to think about is we're going to think about mentor texts. And mentor texts are the texts that you would, you, just like a mentor, right? Is the things that you would look at to know how to do your job better, right? So mentor texts. And, um, so you're going to study published writing that resembles what I want to write. So what I need to do, if I'm going to write about crochet, what I might want to do is I might want to go to the library and check out some books on how to crochet, right? Because if I'm going to be making a book about how to crochet or different types of crochet things, I might want to go to get a mentor text about crochet. Now, sometimes finding books about crochet might be difficult. So maybe I might pick up some books that are about knitting and crocheting. Or maybe there's a book about yarn dyeing, and I want to pick up a book about yarn dyeing. Because they're all set up similar, right? I could also pick up some pattern books that I have at my house and bring some pattern books in, and I could look at how they set their pattern books up. Because that will give me an idea of how I might want to choose to set up my writing. And I really liked the way that, I think it was this book set it up. Because this book showed me that I could just do one page instead of several pages, right? Because this one was all about the young slave, Harriet Tubman. And then the next page was about an escape attempt. And the next page is about escape to freedom. And I might want to just, and so instead of me worrying about chapters, because usually when you look at a chapter book, your chapters are what, five, seven, ten pages long, right? But that doesn't necessarily have to be how long our writing is going to be, okay? 
So start thinking about that perk in your ideas because tomorrow we're going to start sectioning it off into chapters. Dun, 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 dun. Okay? Any questions for me today? All right, my friends at home, we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.